Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. For another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Zack Snyder's Justice League figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at Batfleck in his tactical suit. The question is, is this a 2.0 or a reissue? That's what we're here to find out. Now I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's very serious, quite subdued. We've got this silver panel down below done in this rough textured finish. And then for the image of the figure himself front and center, instead of being black and white, it's black and silver. This image of Batman is actually nice and reflective. When the light hits it, it does pop. As I move the box back and forth, you can see how reflective that image is. On the side of the box, Batflex logo, which is raised, you can feel the edges, it's textural. Then down below, the Justice League symbol. Whereas around the back, we also have the Justice League symbol, that cracked image that we saw when they announced Zack Snyder's Justice League, like the teaser picture. And then over the top of that, warnings and legal information. Underneath this slipcover, an open window showcasing the figure and the accessories inside. On the side of the box, another Batman logo, then around the back, another image of Batfleck. This time though, it's two-tone, it's silver and black with all of these little bits and pieces and panel lines going over the top. I'm pretty sure that's not the figure himself though, because he does have a very intense head turn going on. This figure's got a fixed neck cowl, it can still move, it can't quite get to that extreme of a head turn, at least I don't think it can. Not without looking all kinds of goofy and the cowl tab and everything else being out of alignment. Like I said in the intro, I am pretty darn curious to find out if this is a reissue or a 2.0. What have they changed for this version? And why did they decide to release the tactical suit again? First in hand impressions, he feels just as big, just as chonky and just as heavy as the first version. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is actually reuse. The last time we saw this particular diorama style display base was with the deluxe version of the regular Batsuit figure from the theatrical cut of Justice League. I liked it back then, over time I've soured on it a little. And that's just because it's not practical. The parademons at a massive angle and there's all these bumps and undulations to contend with. So trying to get Batman standing on this guy in a dynamic pose is a challenge. And I don't love being told how I'm supposed to pose my figures by always having to have his foot up on the chest of the parademon. Maybe you'll have better luck than I've had trying to use this display base. And it's massive, so trying to fit this into the collection and have figures posed up around it, also a challenge. Now the sculpt work is okay down below with the gravel texture, and this time they've added all this lava over the top, which I do like. But the parademon and the rock work just come across almost low poly and plasticine-esque, very smooth and a touch shiny as well. They have changed a couple of things with the colour palette this time, and I do like the changes, I just... Once again, don't love how impractical the display base is. The lava is good, the colour of the rocks are better, and the greyish blue skin tone on the parademon is better. Everything else is almost identical, including the nameplate, which they didn't even change to say tactical suit, it still says Batman like it did the last time. Up top, we do just have a regular crotch grabber, but it is a little bit wider than normal, so you can have him standing a touch further forward if you so choose. With all of these swap out pieces like the goggles and the eyes and the mouth plates, we won't be going into full detail now. Just because I don't think there's really any point, it looks better when we actually pop them on the figure, so we'll go into more detail when we do that. Just know that you get multiple different options for the goggles. And the eyes and mouth plates, so this guy doesn't have moving eyes, he's got swap out eyes, just like the previous version and the BVS figure and the regular Batsuit release. He also has swap out magnetic mouth plates. 
You don't really have a tool to remove these like you did with the previous figures, you just have to grab them on the edge and the magnets are weak enough that they should just slide on out of the cowl. Whereas this tool is specifically used to swap out the eyes. With the BVS figure, this little plug on the end was used to push out the mouth plates, whereas with the tactical suit, there's no hole to actually use this to push out the mouth plates with. So like I said, just sort of use friction to remove them from the front of the cowl. Getting stuck into some of Batman's weaponry, he comes with a whole host of small parts and pieces. You do get three of these grenades, the sculpt work is quite good, and there's some speckling of silver on the surface. This is one of his grappling guns. Not his more iconic one though, that's that one over there. I'm pretty sure he uses this more so in BVS when he's in his armoured suit, just correct me if I'm wrong down below. There is also some silver dry brushing here on the high spots. Like I said, this is his more iconic of the two grappling guns. When you think Affleck and you think his grapnel launcher, this is the one that you probably picture in your mind's eye, and I don't blame you, it's a sick looking grappling gun. Unfortunately, there has been a little bit of mold degradation. These little grappling hook pieces are supposed to slot in on the side, but because they are now a little bit looser, they don't like to stay in there all that securely. You could always just add a touch of blue tack in there and maybe they'll stay in place, it's just that I don't really like to have to do that. I would have appreciated them tightening stuff up so that these things don't fall out all the time. Also, compared to last time, they've ditched all of the extra silver dry brushing, which is just a very strange choice. It added so much more surface detail and made this thing look way more realistic. At the very least, you still retain these swap out little hooks that you can plug into the front of the grapnel gun. This one is mid-firing, I suppose, whereas this one has actually already ejected from the gun, but it is more dynamic, how it twists and turns the way it does. And the cable is real metal. The one thing that I would have liked to have seen them add as this grappling hook goes flying, like I said, mold degradation, would have been a poseable version of these grapnel lines. The cables are sturdy enough that they will stay up and not droop down, I just would have liked to have posed them so I could have got even more dynamic. This one, significantly longer, and now the grappling hook itself is closed. You do get three batarangs in total. They are quite prickly and relatively small, so A, be careful not to lose them, and B, just try not to spike yourself as you're wedging these things into his hands. They are done in this metallic shiny silver. And there's some panel line washers in the crevices, just to bring out the sculptor detail. Then over the top of that, some speckling of dirt and grime to make them look a touch more texturized. Considering the Parademon rifle was predominantly used by Batfleck in his tactical suit, I found it pretty strange they decided not to include it with the original release. Instead, they opted to include it with the normal Batsuit figure. Maybe they wanted you to pick up both an accessory share. Either way, now you don't have to, it's included with this new version. It is made of this softer rubbery vinyl, just like the Parademon display base, so I guess aesthetically speaking, it does fit in with that very soft plasticine-esque look about it. You do have some holes running through it, adding to the alien look. There's a whole bunch of greebly stuff on the surface, the top part is more of a metallic silver, whereas the bottom is a darker gunmetal. And there's some airbrush shading around the back as well. You do have some orange metallic pinstripe detail and some metallic blue, both darker and lighter. This is kinda tricky to get into his hand, especially with this trigger that sticks out, but because it is so soft, I don't have any fears of this breaking off in his hand. And lastly, hands, ranging from open palm hands to closed fists already installed on him, trigger finger hands, as well as one batarang holding hand. I have never had an issue with the detail on these Batfleck hands. They genuinely look like leather gloves. You've got the hand wraps down below with the leather grain texture, the wrinkling and buckling and bunching of what would be his leather gloves over the top of his hands, and the brass knuckles. This time though, the hands are darker and the brass knuckles are brighter, so they do stand out more than they did originally. What we are going to do now though is get Batman himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. I'm pretty sure this is going to be to nobody's surprise when I say this. He's kind of great, but he isn't perfect. Now there's one thing that I was hoping they would fix from the original. Back in the day, people thought that he looked stumpy, so they were switching out the ankle extenders for longer ones. 
I didn't see it back then, but I sure as shit see it now. Yeah, he is kind of stumpy. Hot Toys decided not to use the longer ankle extenders, so they stuck with the shorter ones. So his proportions do remain odd. In a dynamic pose, though, it's a non-issue. It's just when he's standing there that it jumps out at you. They change the cape for the worse, it seems. More on that in just a second. The body is the same. The outfit is the same. The paint applications, though, are different. They have hit the armor with a metallic silver. And they've put a bunch of silver dry brushing on the cowl. I'm not sure why. I think I like it. Overall, similar, yet also significantly different. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Batman's cowl. I don't quite know specifically why this cowl vibes with me as much as it does. I just like the busyness, I guess. There's all this extra line work up top, you've got the vent work, you've got the carbon fibre sections, and some extra armour plating, like down here with the gold. This time round, though, they've taken it a step further. They've added so much silver dry brushing, so all of the detail just stands out way more than it did originally. One thing, though, that I wish they did change was this gold section is actually supposed to slot in behind this chest plate. You're only supposed to see these little sticky-outy pieces on the side, not this middle section. Unfortunately, the chest plate is glued down to the undersuit, so you can't slot this in behind it, which is, like I said, the accurate way of having a tactical suit displayed. And it sits over the top of the chest symbol, unless you have his head looking up in perpetuity, which I just don't want to do. A lot of people also don't like the shape of the cowl, how it pinches in at the neck looking quite thin, and how the ears flare out on the sides. That's actually one of the things I like most about this cowl. It looks very sleek, yet still menacing at the same time. Now, the likeness is very strong. I can see Ben Affleck from pretty much every angle. I just wish the eyes weren't looking as dead as they do. Not to worry, though, he does come with some goggles if you want to cover up his eyes. To install the goggles, you want to remove these side pieces, and the best way I've found to do it is to wedge your thumbnail in around the front rather than the back, because there is a little divot for you to slide your fingernail into, and then you can remove these side pieces. So much better. Now we've lost those bored-looking eyes. With the goggles down, this dude looks properly mean. He's about to kick some serious ass. If the goggles down look isn't your thing, you can always put them up. You know what? Also a pretty solid option, if you can get around those bored-looking eyes. I can't, so I'm going to go with goggles down. Now, we do have three different eye positions in total, and three different mouth plates, so we may as well do some rapid-fire switch-outs. Eyes looking forward, he's about to say something. His mouth is parted, you can see his teeth on the inside, very well painted, and the likeness is still quite strong to Affleck, with that little mole on the side. Still that same talking mouth plate, this time with his eyes looking off to the left, which does also mitigate the bored look. So if you didn't want to go with the goggles down, you can always put them up and have him looking either left or right. Speaking of looking to the right, now he is. I do want to stress that he doesn't have moving eyes. You literally have to remove the cowl, take out the eye plate with the eyes painted in the different positions, and then pop the new ones in. They do include a tool that's supposed to make that easier for you. I find that the best way to do it, though, is just to use your fingers. You can use the tool if you want to, just to loosen them up a little and then pull them out with your fingers, but the tool itself isn't all that grippy. You'll see what I mean when you get your copy. They've also added a touch of gold in the corner of the goggles, whereas with the previous version, that just wasn't there. Last switch out. This is the angry mouth plate. I reckon this one bears the least resemblance to Affleck. The other two, the likeness was quite strong. This one's slightly weaker. Still passable, yet not quite perfect for me personally. Funnily enough, the angry mouth plate actually mitigates the bored eye look with the eyes facing forward. I still don't think I'm going to use the angry mouth plate on my figure. Like I said, the likeness isn't perfect. Then again, with the goggles down, this guy looks straight up mean, and you can see the eyes poking through the goggles ever so slightly, because the lenses are cast in translucent plastic. So remember just before when I said the cowl is inaccurate because this tab is supposed to tuck behind the chest armour and this bottom piece isn't supposed to be visible? It still is, but you can kind of fix it. It is risky though, so just 
be careful and maybe don't leave it like this long term. What I'm trying to say is you can actually tuck the tab into the suit itself and then it looks like it's sitting behind the chest armor. It isn't, this is still glued down to the suit, but there's enough play in the rubbery padding that it can stick itself in there and now this is properly accurate. The better solution would probably be just to snip the bottom of the cowl off because it is supposed to look like this with only these two little pieces of gold sticking up the front. Okay, so the cape this time round is perfect. Obviously that's a lie, the cape isn't perfect. Hot Toys, it seems, they always struggle with Batman capes, and I don't know why. There are custom dudes out there literally making capes in their garage and sending them out to us so that we can customise our figures. Hot Toys, just contact one of the custom cape makers. They do them so much better than you all do. At least it drapes well. There's this weave on the surface. It is sort of different on the inside compared to the outside, which I find interesting. These panels on the edge are glued down, and the pleats are already dialed in that go over the top of his cowl. Underneath the cape, there isn't a ton of armor plating on the back of Batman, and yes, you can see he's got some bat cake back here. You also have a zipper down the suit, so if you did want to open this up, pad him out a little, that is an option. I particularly like all of the battle damage on the cape and the tattering down below. Now, I have seen some people display their tactical suit Batman, uh, like this. That's not accurate. I know people get mad when I tell them how to display their figures. By all means, if you want to display him like this, go for it. But the accurate way of doing it is to fold the cape over the edges of the cowl and have these two pleats be visible. It also bulks him up at the traps, making him look slightly bigger and beefier. Not that he really needs any help with that, dude is absolutely jacked underneath the armour. And speaking of underneath the armour, he does have his regular bat suit on, because in the film it's supposed to just be the normal bat suit with all of this stuff just tacked on over the top. In 6 scale, yes, he does have this rubbery bat suit with all of the texture and panel line stuff on, but most of the armour isn't actually removable, especially down the front here. All of this stuff is glued onto the suit. Whereas this piece, the gauntlets, the thigh covers, the knee pads, all of that stuff is removable. You still can't take everything off and just have him in his normal bat suit, unfortunately. That would have been a really cool option for a DX version of this guy. They decided to keep it the same, and I understand. This time, though, they have changed the colour palette. Last time, the armour was just this matte grey, and the bat symbol just blended in with everything. This time... Absolutely not the case. They've hit it with this bright silver, and then over the top of that, they put a wash in all the crevices. So the texture pops more, the battle damage just stands out way better, and even these little rivets are so much more visible. I know it's not quite movie accurate to have this as shiny as it is. I don't even care. I love the way this looks with the new bright, shiny silver paint job. They've also turned up the saturation on the gold. So all of the colour blocking, the gold, the black, the silver, the bluish grey for the suit, is way more obvious. Nothing blends in like it did the last time, where stuff just got lost in the mix because the colours were quite similar. The gauntlets even have a difference in colour between this armour plating and the understructure of the gauntlet itself. You can make out three distinct pieces. These blades are very, very sharp. No joke, I have sliced myself on these multiple times, so please be very careful. They've also adjusted the hands, so now the gauntlets do not push off the hands as easily as they did with that first version, thank goodness. The belt is much more of a warm tone for the gold, and the correct way to display it is like this. Out of the box, it'll probably come sitting flat like that, that's not right. You want to pull down the middle and have the sides swooping down at an angle. This is an accurate way to display the belt. Coming down to the legs, I don't think they considered how Ben Affleck was going to move in this suit, or Richard Citrone, or any of the other stunt doubles that stepped in for Affleck. Because these panels, how is he supposed to move without these digging into his upper thighs? This is a stupid design. It is captured well though in 1-6 scale. There's this almost leather grain texture on the surface, this is a rubbery plastic overlay so you can move it around. Then all of the armour panels are still done in that bright silver with washes over the top and this battle damage just looks absolutely stunning. 
down below, he also has those spikes on the back of his boot guards, which are painted in that more rich, saturated gold. Then for the shoes, dry brushing, gold around the front, and some fully sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I was not expecting there to be as much of a difference as there is between these two. Technically, yes, they are the exact same figure. The same armor, the same suit, the same body, the same head sculpts, the same face plates, and the same little swappable eyepieces. The armor being metallic, however, makes a huge difference. Having them standing in front of me, I can't help it. My eye is drawn to the new one on the left. That bright, shiny metallic silver armor is just gorgeous. Even though it might not be as accurate as the original. This shot right here has been years in the making. Quite literally. Originally, we got the regular suit Batman, tactical suit Batsy, Aquaman, blue and red Superman, Wonder Woman, and The Flash. That was it for Justice League. Until Zack Snyder's version of the film came out. Then we got Cyborg, we got the Nightmare Batman and Black Suit Superman 2-pack, and this 2.0 version of Tactical Suit Batman. So this League, as we're seeing them standing in front of us, this is Zack Snyder's vision for Justice League. And I love the way these figures look standing together. Now, finally, in my collection, I can have the Snyder Cut League all standing side by side. Going over articulation, I'm not expecting any surprises here. I reckon this guy's going to be the exact same thing as we got the first time round. Starting off with the cowl, there is a double ball pig up underneath, looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there. This shoulder pad bicep thing is supposed to sit over the top of this strap when you move it up and it is free floating so it should move out of your way. Going forward, also on ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, ratcheted double bend at the elbow, getting you to about 90 as this piece collides with the strap on the gauntlet. Then for the wrist peg, it's a ratcheted hinge and swivel. For the torso, these armor plates will limit range of motion. Crunching forward to there, it's ratcheted, but I'm really fighting it. These armor plates and the padding are definitely doing their thing. Going back to there, about one click, swivel, and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward on ratchets, just make sure you're moving this piece out so this top part isn't digging into the suit at the hips. Going forward to there, going out to there on soft ratchets, swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee also on ratchets, these straps do unfortunately tuck into the joint, limiting range of motion. And lastly, the ankles. You've got double ball pegs, and it's a split cut boot design. This shin guard can slide up and out of the way to give you just a little bit more range. Going forward and back, swivel, as well as ankle tilt. Don't forget to slide this piece back down to cover up the gap though. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is, for some reason they added all of this extra silver dry brushing on the cowl, and I just don't think that was necessary. The cowl is supposed to be black, it's not metallic. There's a metal understructure, but the cowl over the top is just straight up black rubber. The second annoying thing, while this display base looks sick from a distance, up close, the detail is pretty soft on the rockwork and on the parademon. They also didn't bother updating the nameplate. This is a reused display base that originally came with the deluxe version of the standard Justice League suit Batman. So the nameplate just says Batman, not tactical suit like the 1.0 tactical suits display base said. Also, it's just not practical. The parademon is at an angle permanently. So you always have to have Batman standing at an angle, which just isn't ideal. The third annoying thing is the cape. I like the material choice for a drape cape. There's this weave on the surface and all this battle damage down below plus the tattering. I still think it should have been wired. If you're going to the effort to revamp this guy and re-release him, you may as well just chuck in a wired cape hot toys. The first cool thing is this guy is properly different looking compared to the original. The sculpt work is the same, but the paint applications, they just help it pop so much more. It is way shinier. People were actually modding their original and putting this silver finish over the top. Now, with this new version, you don't have to. It's already metallic. The second cool thing is the Parademon gun. Believe it or not, the first tactical suit Batman didn't come with this, which is kind of weird because he used this gun mostly in the tactical suit. 
so I'm glad they fixed that mistake and they included it this time. The third cool thing is even if Hot Toys wanted to, they couldn't paint the mouth plates the same way that they did back in the day. Technology has moved on and so too have their processes. So the stubble is more HD, the skin texture looks better, and the mole is actually properly painted this time. Needless to say, the new mouth plates are superior. Wrapping up on the Hot Toys Zack Snyder's Justice League Tactical Batman 2.0. Yeah, I called it a 2.0 because that's what it is. It comes with a diorama display base the original didn't. He comes with a parademon gun the original didn't. They've changed the cape and they've changed the finish. Plus they fixed the thing where the hands popped off and was really annoying and frustrating for dynamic posing. This is an improved release. Although it isn't super accurate. It looks sick, no question. The silver shiny armor is glorious. In the movie, it wasn't silver. Go ahead and check it out. Look at some reference. It was more of that matte gray look. This, this is Hot Toys' own take on a tactical bat suit. I love it. It's going in my display, but I understand if it's not for you. If you want something that's more movie accurate, the original is still out there, and that one by far is the more accurate looking bat suit. If you want one that's just going to stand out more, this is probably going to do that for you. When the light hits the shiny silver armor, this dude just pops. So yeah, I can't wait to pop him in the collection alongside the rest of the Justice League. Even though I wish they'd given him a better cape and improved the ankle extender length, because the proportions do come across... funky. Now, I got mine from Pop Collectibles at a discount. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.